In this video, I wanna show you the key concepts from six different demos built with Framer Motion so you can get a taste of the APIs and maybe get inspired to build some animations of your own. Now, I've been using this library for about two years and uh, it's some of the most fun I'm having coding these days but I know folks can feel intimidated by it, which is why I just wrapped up a three hour course over at Build UI called Framer Motion Recipes, where you'll learn how to build the demos we're about to see together with me from scratch. So if you enjoy watching this video and you're ready to start coding some animations of your own, be sure to check that out in the description. But okay, let's dive into the six demos and the key idea that makes each one of them work, starting with this multi-step wizard. So there's a lot of cool little pieces going on here, but the one I wanna call attention to is the actual check animation. And if we come look for the path element that is responsible for this check, this is just actually a normal SVG path that's been kind of augmented with Framer Motion. And uh, look at this, this is all we have to do, change this from zero to one and look at all those check marks animate. So uh, I wouldn't have known how to animate SVGs before using Framer Motion, but with Framer Motion, uh, it's just dead simple using this path length prop. So if you need to draw SVGs, just remember to look up that path length prop. Next up is this email inbox. And uh, the messages are all animated here, both when we receive them and when we archive them. But the thing that really makes this whole effect work is animating these messages out when we archive. And the way that that is controlled is with this magical component animate presence, which is what makes this prop right here work. So if we were to comment out the exit animations, we'd still have the mount, but when we archive them, check that out, they just disappear. And uh, removing elements from the screen is really half of a user's experience with your app. So if you animate only mounting, but forget to animate the unmount, uh, it can really make your app feel kind of disorienting and broken. So uh, if you ever need to animate things on exit, be sure to check out Animate Presence and the exit prop. Okay, our third demo is this scrollable header right here. And uh, there's a lot you can do out of the box with the scroll primitives that Framer Motion gives you. But the cool thing about this one is how we kick off this animation as soon as the user changes scroll direction, regardless of where they are in the article. And the key to making that happen is this code right here. You see uh, this scroll Y, which comes from this hook from Framer Motion, is actually something called a motion value. This is a primitive that uh, Framer Motion gives us, and it has a lot of cool methods like get previous that we can use to compare the value across render frames. And in this one, we're using it to actually calculate the diff in pixels scrolled so that we can know uh, whether the user has changed direction regardless of how far they've scrolled. So if you need to pull off something fancy, it's good to get comfortable with these motion values. You can basically do whatever you want with them. They're a super powerful part of the library. And that brings us to demo four, which is this pretty sweet carousel that we have here. It's a full screen carousel. And it also comes complete with this nice kind of thumbnail bar that tracks the active photo. Now there's a lot of fun details we work on in this one, but the key to really making it all work is this line right here. It is surprisingly simple and it all has to do with this X prop that Framer Motion gives us. And uh, we can basically make this X prop take both a number, like a pixel value. So I can just kind of start changing this, negative 100, negative 200. And you'll see uh, we're just moving this by that many pixels, but we can also pass in percentages like negative 100, negative 200. And you see right there, it just shifts it over by the full width of the screen. So that is the strategy we take in this. And uh, it's really the basis of this whole thing. And uh, Framer Motion also has a corresponding Y prop you can use if you need to slide things up or down. So uh, that's all you need to remember if you ever are trying to do an animation where you're sliding things off screen, either to the left or right or up and down. Just remember these X and Y props. This brings us to demo five, this resizable panel. So I can go ahead and submit this form and we're gonna see this panel dynamically resized to the contents and the surrounding content right here is gonna go ahead and reflow in the document even though it's kind of outside of our panel. That's a really cool feature of this and it's all thanks to how this works, which is thanks to the height prop. Now the height prop, just like the X and Y props, can actually be given a pixel value like zero or 100 or 200. 
and uh, it can also be given a value of auto, uh, which is pretty nice if you ever need to do something like uh, expand or collapse something, you just toggle between zero and auto and you're good to go. But in this case, uh, we actually need to resize according to the contents of the panel. And for that, we bring in this use measure hook so that we can measure the size before and after we submit that form. And the key idea here is really just being aware that you can compose other hooks in the React ecosystem with Framer Motion because the library's boundaries are so good. So this hook is responsible for measuring this and re-rendering whenever the contents change and Framer Motion can go ahead and animate the height to whatever that height is. And uh, these things work really well together. It's kind of uh, mind blowing when you start combining these things and, and all of these libraries work together. But uh, if you do need to resize something like in a sidebar and you show more nav links, you wanna reach for a height and something like a use measure hook. And that brings us to the final demo, our capstone project, which is this infinite scrollable calendar. And uh, it's a monthly calendar here, but we see a lot of cool details. Uh, in particular, when we have uh, a new number of months, we go from five to six, we see the containing panel expands using our resizable panel we built in the previous one. And it's also very similar to our image gallery, except we have an infinite number of months. So if you take a look at this, we're actually gonna see we have initial animate and exit. We are animating things onto and off the screen instead of just sliding the gallery. But we need to change the animation we use based on whether the user clicks next or previous. And the secret to doing this is right here. And these are called dynamic variants. So we can see that we can express each transition for each stage of the animation as a function of the direction, which is some custom data we can pass in. So if you ever find that you need to change how your animation takes place as a result of some state or some props or some derived value, you want to reach for these dynamic variants. In this case, they're direction aware, and they are the perfect solution to pull off this infinite monthly calendar. So there you have it. Those are six different ideas for animating your app and the key API from Framer Motion that makes each one of them work. If you do wanna go deeper, check out the description for more info about the course where you'll learn how to build these from scratch. And more importantly, you'll walk away with an understanding of the fundamentals of this library so you can start to use it in your own work. I hope you found that video insightful. And if you have any questions for me, please let me know.